Hello and welcome back to my design channel. This is part two of the layout grids video. In part one, we cover how to create layout grids and control their visibility. And in part two, we will be looking at more advanced tricks. We'll be looking at how we can use constraints and create padding. Let's jump right into it. So for this exercise, I've just built another desktop frame. Desktop meaning I'm using the desktop size. And for this grid, I'm using a nine column, red 10%. For this type, I'm just gonna use center. And these numbers don't really matter, but for this exercise, I just have it at 100 for width and a 20 gutter. So what I mean by constraints is when I have an element, so for example, a rectangle, I'm just gonna draw it into the workspace. It can just be any size. You can see that the constraints um, is indicated by this blue dashed line. And if you don't know much about constraints, it just means how does an element react when the frame changes size? So whether it gets smaller or bigger. So in this instance, I've indicated left and top, which is also what we see in this diagram over here, which essentially means that the spacing from the left and the top will always be the same, no matter what the frame size is. So you can see I'm shrinking the frame, but it still wants to retain that size. So let's go back to desktop. So the power of layout grids is we can actually use the layout grid as our constraint. And the way we can do that is only when the type is on stretch. So when it's on stretch and I click on the element, you can see the blue dashed line has updated to reach the far, oh, not the far most, but the closest column grid. So obviously if I want to use this one, I can just change it to right. So I can use this drop down and click right or I can click right on this diagram. And now you can see it's on the right. And what's the benefit of this? Let's go back to left actually. So let's say we are on the second column grid and we can also snap to it, which is really great. So say I always want it to be aligned to this left side. No matter where that grid is, that element will follow it. And also you can do the right as well. Same thing, so let's say I want it to always snap to the right. So it's going to pick its closest column grid, which is this one on the right. And then it's going to follow it. Pretty cool. And obviously, if you want it to follow two sides, so the left and the right, you want to pick left and right and not scale, which doesn't sound intuitive, but I'll show you why later. So left and right. You can see it's following both the left and right of these column grids. Let's go back to desktop. And for whatever reason, when you have it on scale, it no longer follows these column grids and just ignores them completely. And it goes back to using the boundary of the frame. So now with scale, when I shrink my column grids, you can see the element is no longer attached itself to these column grids. Let's go back to desktop. An interesting thing to note is that constraints do not act like locks. So I'm just going to use the rectangular tool and draw a element in my workspace. So currently, for whatever reason, this element is not aligned perfectly to any of the column grid boundaries. So I'm going to use the right constraint for this exercise. And you can see the dash line that indicates that this element is constrained to the right side of this third column. So now when I shrink my frame, you can see it's maintaining that width. But as you can see now, the closest column is now not the third one and it's the second column grid from the left. So when I let go and I want to stretch out my frame again, you might think that it's still locked to this third one, but no, in Figma, it updates every time you've changed your frame size to the new closest. So now when I click on it, now the second column is the closest. So that just keep that in mind when using column grids, but I would say that most people would not experience this issue because the whole point of using column grids is that you use the column grids to determine your element placement. So you would rarely ever have an element that's off the grid like this.
Now we will use layer grids to make padding and padding is essentially some white space border that we can put around our frames to just indicate how much white space we want to leave. So for this exercise, I'm using another frame and I'm just pick the default desktop size again. So I'm going to start with a new layout grid. So I'm using the plus icon and then I'm going to use a column and we're just going to do the left one first. So we have a count of one. We only need one line on the left side and we want it to be, let's just say 200. And we have 100% transparency, so essentially opaque. And when we have an element on our frame, we can just align it to this column grid. And to check the spacing, you can actually hold Option. And then if you hover your mouse anywhere outside of the element, so any elements within the frames, you can do this and it'll show you the spacing to the next element. So this is 200, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, but we don't really want this thick red visual. I think it's too harmful for my eyes. So we just want a single red line. So your instinct might be, okay, let's make it 200. And we'll just make the width zero. And another benefit of actually getting rid of this red is this red actually covers your elements, which is super annoying for whatever reason. So you might be thinking, yep, so I've offset it 200 and the width is going to be zero. But with a width of zero, the column grid doesn't exist. So we're going to make it one, maybe, maybe one. And we zoom in. And yes, we have this column grid of one. Um, but actually that's really annoying because when you actually zoomed out like this and you're trying to like align it to this column grid, maybe you align it to the right side of this one pixel. And then when I hold the option key again, see, it says 201. That's really annoying. So we don't actually want a one pixel column grid. We want it to be zero. And the way we get it to work is in our options again. Um, we want the width to be zero and the offset to be zero, and we want the gutter to be zero. So when we have a gutter as zero, because all our columns are touching each other, if they were all red, so as an example, let's say we have five columns. If they were all, if I press zero for gutter, it will essentially just make this big red rectangle. And then there's no way you can tell how many columns there are. So actually what Figma does is when all the columns are touching each other, they become lines, which is perfect. It's exactly what we want. We can just go back to a count of one. And when I zoom in again, you can see now our line has a zero pixel thickness, which doesn't really make sense, but I'm not complaining. So we can get it to the line and we're going to check with holding the option key. And yes, it's at 200. So for this exercise, I am going to change it now to be 80. Mm, oh, let's say, yeah, let's say 80. Doesn't really matter. We don't need this element anymore. So I'm just going to delete it. And now I'm just going to repeat it for all three sides. The most annoying thing is you can't duplicate layout grids. I'm just going to make it three more times. So to just do it really quickly, so column, we're going to make it on the right. So we have right, the width is 80, and then we have zero, zero at 100%. And then the next one, we've got to do the top. So it's not a column anymore, it's a row. So we can just do the same thing, count, top, um, height, what do we have at 80? So zero, zero again. I'll make this, oops, 100%. And then finally, the last one, it's a row again. I'm going to do a count of one, and now at the bottom, 80, zero, zero, right? That's amazing. And then because there are four layout grids, if I had a, another frame like we did before, let's say, what, on desktop, um, I can't really copy. I'm not trying to right click this. I can't copy it. So essentially what we need to do is we can make these four rows of layout grids into a style. So I'm just going to add a style called padding 80 pixels, which is great. And then 
I can just add that style. Right. Now, for whatever reason, let's say you want a 40 pixel padding. And you might be thinking, oh my gosh, I got to restart and build those four layout grids again. But what the best way to actually do it is to reuse what you've already made. So what I would do is I would go layout grid, padding 80, 80 pixel. I would just detach the style. So essentially what that means is, yes, I've applied the style onto my frame, but I don't want it to be connected to my library anymore. And the reason you can do that is I have these four, um, four layout grids already set up and all I can do is now just change it to let's let's say 24 let's just say 24 so I can go 24 24 24 24 which is perfect and now in my styles icon I can go create style and I'm going to call this adding 24 so you can see how quick you can make other styles really quickly and the best thing about Figma is obviously you can have artboards within artboards or frames within frames. So for for example, if you have components in your website that you've put on, you can also have these padding paddings made using layout grids, which is awesome. And like I said, instead of turning them all off one at a time, well, these ones work because they're all style. Um, I would still use Control G as the quick way to turn them on and off. Hopefully you've learned something today about layout grids. It seems pretty obvious, but there's definitely a lot of hidden features that you can use. Um, and just to go back to my original example, don't feel like you need to follow all the conventions. In this example, I wanted to make a side expanding accordion website. I don't know, just trying to make it a bit different. Instead of 12 columns, I've used nine. No particular reason, just wanted to test out if I could design something using nine. As you can see, I have contents in the far right four columns, and then I have another section of four columns, and then I have a one column. So definitely feel free to play around with different configurations of layout grids, and it'll be interesting to see all your designs. That's all for now. Hope you all stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.